Hi there, my name is Shelley, and this is our sixth lesson on algebraic fractions and we are continuing with the simplification of fractions. Now up until now we've seen how important it is to be able to factorize and without it we cannot simplify fractions. By the end of this lesson you will be able to factorize trinomials. In our previous lesson, we learned how to factorize trinomials specifically with a diagram where we use the area of a rectangle. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to factorize trinomials without a diagram. Let's take the example from our previous lesson. Do you remember we saw that the factors of x squared plus 7x plus 12 are x plus 3 and x plus 4? And we work this out using the area of our rectangle as a tool to help us. Now we knew the area of our rectangle, the product, and we used it to help us find the sides or the factors of our rectangle. Now how do we do this without a diagram? Let me show you how. The first step is, you need two numbers that give a product of the constant in your trinomial. In this case, it is 12. And here, 3 and 4 give us a product of 12. The second step is that those two numbers must give a sum of the coefficient of x in your trinomial. In this case, it is positive 7. And here again, 3 and 4 give us a sum of 7. In other words, you must find a number times another number which is equal to positive 12 and those two numbers must add up to positive 7. So what are the numbers? They are positive 3 and positive 4. Remember those steps. It's an easy method in order to factorize a trinomial. Now let's do an example together. Factorize this one without a diagram. x squared plus 9x plus 14. Now, what two numbers multiplied together would give us 14? Well, they could be 1 multiplied by 14, which gives us 14, or 2 multiplied by 7, which gives us 14. But we still need one of these options to add up to give us 9. Let's see. 1 plus 14 adds up and gives us 15, that's not 9. But then we have 2 plus 7, which adds up and gives us 9. So we can see that 2 and 7 are the correct options. Now let's see how we write this. We always write down our two brackets. So we write down our two brackets. Now notice we have an x squared here. So in the first place in each bracket, we are going to write x. Now we write down our correct numbers. Remember to include the signs as well. So we have a plus 2 and a plus 7. So the factors of the expression must therefore be x plus 2 and x plus 7. Now look at this next example. Factorize x squared minus 9x plus 14. Note, this is similar to the previous example, but this time we have a minus 9x. What do we do here? Well, let's follow the same steps carefully and see. What two numbers multiplied together would give us positive 14? Well, there are a number of options. We could have positive 1 multiplied by positive 14, which would give us positive 14. But we could also have minus 1 multiplied by minus 14, because that also gives us positive 14. We could also write 2 multiplied by 7, that gives us positive 14. And in a similar way, minus 2 multiplied by minus 7 would also give us positive 14. Now which of these options do we choose? What we need to do is add up each of the two numbers and see if we end up with a minus 9. 1 plus 14 would give us 15. Minus 1 plus minus 14 would give us minus 15. 2 plus 7 would give us 9. 
And let's look at this last option, minus 2 plus minus 7 would end up giving us minus 9. So this is the correct option. So now we need to write this down. So we always write down our two brackets. And then we know we have an x squared here, so we write an x in the first place in each bracket. Now we need to write down our numbers, and remember to always include their signs. So it's minus 2 and minus 7. So the factors of our trinomial are x minus 2 and x minus 7. We are factorizing expressions involving trinomials. So let's try one more example together before we move on to the fractions. Factorize x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now we need to think of two numbers that multiply together to give us minus 6, but those same two numbers need to add up to give us minus 5. Now let's think of the options that multiply together to give us minus 6. We could have 1 multiplied by minus 6, because that gives us minus 6, but we could have had minus 1 multiplied by positive 6, also giving us minus 6. But what about 2 multiplied by minus 3? That gives us minus 6. And in a similar way, minus 2 multiplied by 3 could also give us minus 6. Now we need to see which option is correct. Remember, those numbers need to add up to give us minus 5. Let's try. 1, and let's write it down, 1 plus minus 6 gives us minus 5. So that is the correct option. Once again, let's write it. We write down our two brackets. And then we know that an x is going to go in the first place in each bracket because here is our x squared. Now remember to include the signs and remember this is our option, so it's plus 1 minus 6. So we write plus 1 minus 6. And so our factors of this trinomial are x plus 1 and x minus 6. Now it's time to work with fractions again. We are going to use what we've just learned about factorizing trinomials to simplify our fractions. Here we go. Simplify the fraction. x squared plus 3x plus 2 all divided by x plus 1. What do you notice about this fraction? The numerator is a trinomial. So, before we can simplify this fraction, we need to factorize our numerator first. We know how to do this. We need to find two numbers that multiply together to give us 2 and that would add up to give us positive 3. So let's try 2 multiplied by 1. 2 multiplied by 1 gives us 2. But does 2 and 1 add up to give us 3? Let's check. 2 plus 1 gives us 3. So this is definitely the correct option. So we write in the numerator our two brackets. Remember we write an x in the first place in each of the brackets. And now we write our numbers. Remember to include the sign, so we have plus 1 plus 2. And this is all divided by x plus 1. Now x plus 1 in our denominator can be written as one factor by putting a bracket around it. Now we have a common factor, which we can cancel out, and we are left with x plus 2. Remember what we are doing in this lesson. We are still cancelling fractions, but this time the fractions contain trinomials. Let's try our next example. Simplify x squared plus 3x plus 2, all divided by x squared minus 1. In our previous example, we already factorized x squared plus 3x plus 2. And we know it is x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 1. And that's all divided by our denominator. Now, can we factorize our denominator? Look carefully. What do you recognize in the denominator? Do you see that it's a difference of two squares? And remember, we can factorize that as x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. 
and now we can see we have common factors and we can cancel them. So the x plus 1 cancels with the x plus 1 and we are left with x plus 2 all divided by x minus 1. We cannot cancel this any further as both the numerator and the denominator now contain terms and not factors. Let's try one last example where we simplify a fraction. If you take it step by step, you will see that you do know how to do it. Simplify this fraction. x squared multiplied by x plus 1 minus 2x multiplied by x plus 1 plus x plus 1 all divided by x squared minus 1. Now let's look at our numerator. Notice there are three terms in our numerator. So let's look for a common factor. Can you see it? It's the whole bracket x plus 1. So we write down our common factor x plus 1. And then we open a second bracket. Now x plus 1 divided into our first term, we are left with x squared x plus 1 divided into our second term, we are left with minus 2x. And x plus 1 divided into our last term, we are left with a plus 1. Remember to check that you've accounted for all the original terms. There were three terms in the numerator. And now in the bracket, there are also three terms. Now let's see if we can factorize the denominator. Well, what do you see in the denominator? It is a difference of two squares, so yes, it can be factorized. And its factorization is easy, we've done it before. It becomes x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. Now notice we have our common factor x plus 1, and so we can cancel it out. And we are going to be left with x squared minus 2x plus 1, all divided by x minus 1. But what did you notice about that? I've written it on a new page. Look at it carefully. What do you think of this? Is this fraction in its simplest form? No. The trinomial in the numerator can still be factorized. Remember the method we've learned to factorize trinomials. This one looks easy. We've done it before. It should be written as x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. And then we're still going to divide it by our x minus 1. Now let's just check this trinomial to see if it really was right. We have minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 which gives us positive 1, and then we need to say minus 1 plus minus 1, and that gives us minus 2. So it confirms that our factorization is correct. Now we can cancel our common factors. x minus 1 is common to both terms, and the answer is x minus 1. That's all for this lesson on fractions including trinomials. Now it's time for you to test yourself to see how well you understood factorizing trinomials. Simplify the following fraction. x squared multiplied by x minus 3 plus 4 multiplied by 3 minus x all divided by x squared minus x minus 6. In this lesson, we put our knowledge together and learned how to cancel fractions involving trinomials and the difference of two squares. Join me for the next lesson where we will learn how to multiply fractions.